So you mentioned you've covered 13 companies here and you touched on some of the ones that didn't perform so well earlier, but which were the ones coming out towards the bottom of the list? So the, the two companies that came at the bottom of the list were AstraZeneca and Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, older companies that I think recently have struggled to think about how to commercialise products, uh, to get them through phase three successfully, to get them over the regulatory hurdle and then to do something to, to, to essentially launch a differentiated molecule. Um, we saw those companies really not doing very well there. So what could the companies which are performing towards the bottom of the index do to actually improve their ranking? I think the, th the, the one clue that you get looking at the way that companies have performed within the index is that those companies that think harder earlier in development have tended to do better. Um, and culturally that matters because if you tend to have silos where R&D decide the direction of a product into phase three and then into market. The companies that allow that to happen haven't been as productive as the companies that think harder before they put the product into the massive, expensive phase three uh, space with hope in their hearts. I think that some of the companies that have t t come, come towards the bottom of the list have put a product into phase three hoping that it would pr that perform better than the class uh, standard, than the gold standard in the, cl in the, in the therapeutic space. Um, if they want to change things, they just need to think differently. The market is different now. The market has different requirements. That, you know, the market access requirement has to be thought about well before you get into phase 2B. If you don't have it in your label, you can't say it. And it, all of those things matter. There's a time-related element to how you launch innovation now. Either you're not going to launch it at all, or you're going to launch a kind of damp squib onto the marketplace because you won't have ticked the boxes. Uh, that the audiences are already saying that they want to see. Now I'm sure some of those that didn't come out near the top would argue and say well actually you've calculated this over a five year period, we've changed a lot the last few years, I'm sure we're now performing and being much more innovative. Do you pick up hints of that from the index? Absolutely. You'd expect that because we had to take a five year historical view, the things are going to change if we were to look, do it again in five years time. Of course doing it year on year the time, timeline will shift we have already seen indications that some of the companies that came at the top have started to change the way they do what they do. And of course some of the companies that are further down the index are also changing to be more innovative. It's, it's the industry's biggest challenge. I think the industry is recognising a statistic that we uh, put out there which is that only one in four of launched drugs returns its investment. That's not the ones that die in phase three and die in phase two, but the only one in four drugs that hits the market returns its investment. Now a lot of companies are talking about innovation at the moment. Um, we want to change the, the, the parameters of that conversation slightly and say well innovation still is what you launch, uh, but how you launch it successfully matters. Um, so of course there are a lot of companies thinking quite hard about how to be more innovative in this space. Uh, a lot of people talking about it, not quite so sure everyone's getting it right though, so we do expect to see movement within the, within the top 13. It's probably a little bit early to say what's the feedback been from Pharma because you've only just released this index, but how do you think they will receive it? What kind of feedback do you expect to get? I expect, and it is too early, we haven't, we've only just put this out there so we've not had the uh, uh, reactions from the Pharma companies yet. What I would expect is that those companies that are likely to embrace change going forwards against the changing marketplace would have to recognise that the lessons of this are there, are there to, be, to, to be picked up. Uh, there will be some people that find it uncomfortable because it's not the, not the story they've been telling the world. But the pharmaceutical environment in 2015 doesn't look like it did in 2005. Um, the, the index is there to give an indication of what needs to change to make things different. So for those companies looking to improve their innovation and the way they create innovation, what kind of things do you think they need to be doing? How do they create that culture of innovation? Actually, we're asked that question a lot. And there is a timing that's important to how you make innovation work. Um, a lot of the time you're trying to predict what the market will want in the future. And if you put the concept of value around that, what will the market value at some point in the future? You then have to bring that all the way back and then say, how do we put those measures of value into the drug? Now you then say, well, should we be doing it just before we launch? Well, no, that's too late. You can't include the differentiation criteria at that point. So how far do you have to pull your, your bow back to make sure the arrow fires properly? And say, well, the only time that you get to do this properly is somewhere between phase one 
and the beginning of phase three. So if you're going to get this right, phase two is, is the real sweet spot to involve everyone in a, in a discussion about well, what is it that we're launching with this, uh, with this molecule? Um, how do we do it differently? How do we optimize the chances of success, the probability of success, regulatory success, technical success, and commercial success for a molecule? So companies who want to get innovation right have to do it right, have to get it right at phase two. What key steps do you think those companies that are performing slightly weaker in the innovation index could put in place to improve their performance? Something I'm sure many of the execs will be looking at. One great indicator that we had as we were doing the, the research for this was that companies that do better tend to have a much more multidisciplinary, multifunctional approach to early development. They have good commercial people in, in place on the brands. They also have regulatory, market access, clinical, R&D, or talking to each other early in the development of a molecule. It isn't left to one group to, to work its way through uh, and then hand it off to the next. It's not a baton passing exercise. Um, so companies that have performed weaker should be looking to engage their, their teams, their project teams, much earlier in development with a view that things aren't the same, that you shouldn't just be doing something because that's the way it's been done for the past 10 years. If you're launching a pain drug, you don't just do the minimum requirement, minimum required studies to get this drug on the market. All you're doing at that point is putting off the disaster for later. Um, engaging a multidisciplinary team is the key to, 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 to really productive innovation.